Last time, we looked at the Apollo 11 mission, and what a success that was. It could honestly be said that this was the culmination of the dreams and fantasies. So many firsts happened on that mission. But surely, NASA could always do better. And they did. Man must explore. In 1971, NASA and America would be the first to drive on the moon. That's right, we're talking about cruising around the moon on a moon buggy. Okay, we're moving forward, Joe. Roger. Man, this is really a rock and roll ride, isn't it? And oh my, was it expensive. The final cost was $38 million. In today's money, that's almost $279 million. This is Space Journey 101, and today we will look at the first wheels on the moon. Apollo 15 took off in 1971 and made its way toward the moon. Crewed by Commander David R. Scott, Command Module Pilot Alfred M. Warden, and Lunar Module Pilot James B. Irwin, aboard with the three astronauts was the 460-pound Lunar Roving Vehicle, or LRV for short, and this LRV would be driven 17.5 miles around the lunar landscape. The LRV was a light electric vehicle designed to operate in the moon's low gravity vacuum. It could traverse the lunar surface, allowing Apollo astronauts to broaden their extravehicular activities. The frame was constructed of aluminum alloy 2219 tubing welded assemblies and consisted of a three-part chassis hinged in the center to allow it to be folded up and hung in the lunar module quad one bay. It featured two side-by-side -side foldable tubular aluminum seats with nylon webbing and aluminum floor panels. A large mesh dish antenna was mounted on the rover's front center mast. Driving the LRV was very different from a standard car. Well, the next will be selecting power for each of the four individual drive motors. The four drive motors, two steering motors and brakes were controlled by a T-shaped hand controller between the two seats. Moving the stick forward propelled the LRV forward, while moving it left or right turned the vehicle left or right, and pulling backward activated the brakes. The control and display modules were located in front of the handle and displayed data on the speed, heading, pitch, power and temperature levels. The navigation system was based on continuously recording direction and distance with a directional gyro and odometer and feeding this data to a computer which kept track of the overall direction and distance. But the moon presented some problems for the LRV and one engineer had the solutions. Ron Creel, a thermal control engineer, would prove his worth when dealing with the issue of moon dust. Moon dust absorbs solar energy, which charges it electrically and makes it more sticky. It damages electronics, clogs up systems, and eats through layers of spacesuit material. To deal with the situation, fenders prevented the LRV's wheels from creating too much dust. Dust covers protected radiators while driving, and brushes were employed to remove extra dust. The other issue with the LRV was keeping the electronics from freezing and overheating while in transit and on the moon. A solution was called barbecue mode, in which the spacecraft would rotate much like a rotisserie to distribute and regulate the heat. For his efforts, Creel was awarded a Silver Snoopy. The astronauts brought back around 170 pounds of samples, including the famous seat belt rock, which would not have been collected without the LRV. 
The story goes that Commander Scott noticed the rock while driving the LRV and decided to collect it. However, Scott knew that Mission Control would not permit him to stop to collect it due to time constraints and informed Mission Control that he was adjusting his seatbelt. After 12 days, 7 hours, on August the 7th, 1971, the Apollo 15 mission would be over. Apollo 15 splashed down in the Pacific Ocean and the crew was picked up by helicopters from the USS Okinawa. Yet while we rejoice in our success, we cannot afford to forget the sometimes painful efforts that gave us these achievements. The moon buggy was left a short distance from the lunar module, where it can still be found today. In the next episode, we will talk about first satellites to reach outer planets. Stay tuned.